Okay, how do I start this video? Um, oh, I know. So, um, a couple days ago, I decided to play Dragon Ball Fighter Z, or Dragon Ball Fighter Z, however you pronounce it. And be mostly because recently I got the uh, PC copy of it, and it's actually pretty puggers. It actually loads up really nicely, and the game feels very smooth. I had a lot of fun with it. So I decided to take it into rank battles because I, I, you know, I'm trying to get good at the game. I'm trying to learn some things or two, maybe you know, one or two things. And admittedly, thanks to ranked and um, at least this game, I've actually learned a couple new interesting tricks that I didn't know about. Not incredible ones, just very minorly simple ones. But admittedly, now this footage doesn't show it, but I kept getting washed. So I was thinking, how do I improve my gameplay? How do I actually? you know, expand upon it. So obviously I was looking to YouTube, I decided to search up some videos, and after watching a couple of them, I found um, this one interesting video called Why Ranked Battles in Fighting Games Are Bad. And for some reason, there were a few things that this man said that I was thinking, you know what this reminds me of? Super Smash Bros Ultimate Quick Play. And I was thinking, man, Quick Play sucks. But why? Why does it suck? So I decided maybe I should do just a little bit of some digging, and by a little bit of digging I mean just playing the game. And I think I found the case. I think at least. So I hope that this hopefully short video essay will teach you guys why quick play, simply put it, isn't worth your time. Alright, let's get the obvious one out of the way. Lag, 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 and well, lag. I, I, can you really blame us? <laughs> We're at the final patch, and the online hasn't even been fixed! What?! I don't want to dwell on this too much since all fighting games, in general, kind of suffer the same thing, including as the game I was playing before Dragon Ball Fighters. but Super Smash Bros. Ultimate seems to suffer from it the most. Primarily because, well, it's awful, and it can be awful. And it's so awful, it literally changes the landscape of what's viable versus what's not usable. And again, friendly reminder, we're at the final patch. There will no longer be any more patches after this, so what we get is what we get. What's also mind-boggling to me is that everyone in their own way experiences different lag, or different input lag in general. Sometimes when you see other people through gameplay, you may not even realize it at first, but through the other person, they are experiencing a brick wall, what it feels like. This is usually why a lot of people tend to stay away from playing against people in other regions in general, or other countries, because that is primarily where it suffers the most. Not to say that quick play in general is gonna allow something like that to happen, but online in general kind of just... It, it doesn't really have any solution towards that. So because of that, most of the time, whenever you do play online, it's always region locked. And even then, even when it is region locked, you can't be expecting some people to be able to hook up an ethernet adapter to their garbage tier Wi-Fi. First of all, obvious cost of money. Second off, they would have to rearrange their whole entire Wi-Fi router so that it would be as closest to their switch as possible. And thirdly, they would probably have to hotwire or do all the hicky biggy wire stuff, whatever, just so it could be able to fully function. And unfortunately to many people, including me, something like that just isn't accessible. Something like that just isn't doable. Unless you want us to go digging through our walls, I don't think we're going to be able to connect an ethernet adapter anytime soon. The only people who are going to be able to do this are the people who even put their time and effort into the game, which is also why they put their time and effort into sometimes quick play. But the only reason why they do that is because, unlike us, they're actually good at the game. Versus us, who don't have an ethernet number one, and number two, die a lot. Frame one reflector. What? <laughs> no! Really? <laughs> now, this one is kind of the main reason why quick play just is not worth your time. The biggest reason is the preferred rule sets. 
Now, why the preferred rule says is such a problem is it kind of mishmashes between casual and ranked system. So think of it like this. So you know in Dragon Ball Fighters how there is two options. There's the ability to play in ranked or there's the ability to play in casual. So quick play is basically those two options, but it's like a little coin flip if you get one of those two options. Now, how is it like this, you may ask? Well, simple. Preferred rules has different stages, different rule sets, such as, you know, stamina, battle, or stocked, time, whatever, has the ability to have items on or off, including Smash Ball, has the ability to have final Smash Meter on or off, and you can even change the amount of stocks or the amount of time there is in the battle. Why this is such an issue is because it kind of allows people to exploit the system and exploit how they nab their wins. And unfortunately, there are some people that just rather would nab a win than to actually grind out the game. And don't take my word for it, take some of my friends' words for it. Take this guy's word for it. Uh, no, not only is that a fourth Sora, what is this stage? What? Oh my God, what am I looking at? What? What is this map? Now, unfortunately, this has been such a staple in Smash Online. So unfortunately, if for whatever reason there were to be a theoretical new patch, this is the only thing that very likely can't be fixed. This has been set in stone from the beginning, so why would they change this from to the end? My belief is that if they've worked on something, and if they put it in the game, they are pretty much setting themselves to where they can't change it. Not in the sense that, of course, you know, like, patching out, like, changing variables, but at the absolute most, changing variables seems to be the only thing they will do. So, with this in mind, why would they change the way preferred rule sets work? And from seeing the consistency and all the rest of the things they've added in this game through the patches, I don't see them adding any sort of alternative to Quick Play's terrible preferred rule set system. Obviously there is battle arenas, but we'll get to that during a later part of the video. But for now, what we have is a very broken and messed up and confusing mishmash casual slash rank rule system. Part of it is to blame for the player base, but the player base should never ever influence something that can lead to a very not fun experience. Maybe if it wasn't so incredibly bad in terms of lag, maybe we no longer have to deal with this stupid region lock thing. Now, this one is kind of a subject or reasoning that not many people actually talk about, and I don't think anyone really thinks about too often. And that is habits, or in this case, bad habits. Now, this isn't like an uncommon thing to happen in Smash Online in general, but I tend to see this a lot with Quick Play in general, or this could be caused from Quick Play in general. Now, I'm gonna let this clip play a bit, I want you to see if you can Note some anything interesting that you may have caught with your eyes from the way the Ganondorf is playing, for instance. I wouldn't blame you if you haven't caught your eye on it yet, but basically, from what I have saw from you know, observation and from me playing the game, this Ganondorf had went for unsafe options pretty much all the time throughout that his entire second stock. And because of that, I was able to catch up onto it, space it well, most of the time at least, and abuse Mithra's um, foresight to be able to completely punish the Ganondorf what feels like every single step he took. Now, why am I using this situation as an example for what I'm talking about? Well, it's primarily because Quick Play sort of enforces this type of you know, way of playing. The biggest reason is that the way the Ganondorf is playing could potentially work 100% on another player. But on the other hand, kind of just like me, it did not work on me. So because of that, there are probably a lot of situations where things that would seem very easily, you know, plausible against other people would not seem that, you know, very doable for another player. But the reason this is a thing is because, well, 
this is sort of because it's in the name Quick Play. You are allowed to just leave the game if you felt like it. So because of that, it sort of aligns with this idea that some people would actually just leave the game because, oh, my strategy of how, you know, I would grind the wins out of Quick Play won't work on this guy. So let's move on to the next guy, farm it off of him, and then it'll work. But the methods that the person probably uses are just beyond bad habits. So because of that, if it were to be taken in for, say, a very serious situation, then obviously something like that won't work. And for the case of this video that I'm trying to make an example of, if you're trying to grind out your skill to the maximum, quick play won't help you with that. Adaptation is definitely one of the hardest things to learn in this game, because it's not about learning how to adapt, it's about just naturally being good at it. And admittedly, it's very hard to do that when you're constantly shifting from one opponent to another, one to another, the one to another, the one to another. It's really hard to shift your adaptation from someone playing Sonic, or someone playing Samus, or someone playing Little Mac, or someone playing Ryu, or someone playing Sora, etc, etc. And speaking on the part where you get to leave whenever you feel like it because it's quick play, some people will also just do that when they're up against a character that they specify as considered to be a bad matchup for them. And to be honest, I feel like I've myself done that a few times completely by accident. There's a whole wide variety of people that play this game. There are going to be some who only find enjoyment in winning by either exploitation or just in general. And there will be some people who just want to grind the game. And then there will be some people who just simply want to play the game because they want to play the game. Another thing that also kind of gets in the way of being able to actually adapt to other people's playstyles is also just your mentality or even how you're feeling at the current situation. Let's just first say that you've lost four times in a row to four different people. How would you feel after that? Would you think it's the game's fault? Would you think it's your fault? Or would you think that the game is just doo-doo garbage butter? Regardless of what option you think it is, you'd still be angry, and it still would be extremely difficult to be able to adapt or even learn properly. Sometimes it'll even make you worse at the game by just being angry, because then it'll make you more prevalent to doing bad habits. So at the end of the day, for mentality's sake and for habit's sake, I don't know if quick play is even up to par with the idea of even helping you in that department. Now, unless you're new to Smash Online, there's probably a chance that you're thinking to yourself, what exactly can I do? What other option can I pick that's better than Quick Play? What other way can I grind but not have to constantly invite my friends over what it feels like every single time? Well, simple. Just pick the option below Quick Play. Now, before we get into the topic, this is not me saying that this option is perfect. There will still definitely be some lag involved, especially if one of the parties doesn't really have the best connection ever or neither has an ethernet. But this is a better alternative than just quick play. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, for one, you can set it to any rule set you want. So, there will never ever be one of those situations where you feel like, oh, well, the reason why I don't play quick play is because I fight this person and that person did like three minutes in one stock, or I fought this person that did like hazards on or had items on. In public battle arenas, or just battle arenas in general, friends, public doesn't matter, it will always be the set rule that you want it to be, especially if you're the host of it or if you have a friend who has a competitive taste in rule set. Are you still probably gonna get one of those moments where you get completely crapped on one way or another? Absolutely, that's definitely plausible. But it's not gonna happen every single time like it's going to happen usually in quick play. You will absolutely one way or another feel the reeks of the bad lag, but you won't have to deal with the disadvantages of the bad preferred rule sets, or you know, janky rule sets, whatever. And since because it's a battle arena, and you may or may not be doing this with your friends, you'll actually be able to learn a thing or two, instead of just assuming that you're good at the game, or you're assuming there's something wrong with the game, and then having to constantly be absolutely gutted for it. To go a little bit off topic, there was a video I was recommended after watching the Why Ranked Battles Are Flawed video, and it was made by a friend of the same user, 
who made a video about why having a training partner is extremely important when it comes to learning a fighting game. And to put it shortly, he said things about how your training partner can critique you about your thing. So let's just say if you were going up against a better player, you could ask them for a bit of feedback and to allow them to give you a little bit of more depth about your gameplay and how you can improve on it. Need an example? Well, allow me to show you what it kind of looks like. So a while back, I played with one of my friends on Discord, and I decided to record one of a few matches that we played together, and I decided to use this as an example of what I'm talking about when it comes to critiquing. So, to point out a few examples, I bucketed all the projectiles and was able to get a pretty much an insta-kill move, and because of that, it intimidated the opponent what feels like a lot, and I noticed that the opponent also tend to want to act a lot or throw out a few aerials before landing. So I took advantage of that by waiting until he landed after throwing out an aerial, and then ultimately used the bucket. It was a kind of a combination between intimidation and also just waiting out for him to use an aerial so that he landed with lag. Another thing I also noticed is that every time my opponent jumped from the ledge, he would always throw out an aerial of some sort. So instead of using the bucket to intimidate him since I didn't have that full, I decided to instead charge my up smash, which with Mr. Game & Watch is actually invincible on hit. So once I waited for him to throw an aerial like he usually did after jumping off the ledge, I decided to charge it up and, you know, that happened. There are also a few scenarios where I actually took advantage of him jumping off the ledge by using an up air or neutral air for example, but you'll probably see those throughout the video. I noticed that every time my opponent always whiffed a move, he would always resort to rolling. Didn't matter what attack it was, it was always a backwards roll, a forward roll, but mostly in particular a backwards roll and rarely a spot dodge. Now unfortunately since I'm not super duper duper familiar with Game & Watch's speed, mobility, frame data in general, I didn't really have many options to take advantage of it, but what I did know is that dash attack can cover a lot of the field, so I used that as a way to punish his roll. Not something super major, but something small to keep in mind of. Once again, I noticed that my opponent was always jumping off the ledge, so I decided to catch that with a perfectly timed back air instead. But the reason why this snatch was so important is because he didn't even realize that he ran out of MP, which meant that he was actually dead for me catching him with a back air. So this is another one of those instances where I was able to catch someone's jumping off the ledge and was able to capitalize it and steal a stock for it. What I'd probably recommend doing, and this isn't going to be a consistently working strategy, but one thing I do recommend, and this is something I do a lot, is just simply waiting at the ledge. There's nothing wrong with just taking a little bit of time off and just waiting for a correct option, or just thinking about a correct option. And like I said, I do this a lot, and there are a lot of situations where I was able to kind of freely get away with whatever option I wanted to go for because I decided to wait for what felt like a year. And this situation is the perfect example of how landing like can absolutely gut you in the pants. If you aren't aware of how your hitbox comes out and if you don't know how much landing lag you have, you will absolutely get punished for it hard, as the situation did to him. Now, I guess this video ended up being a little bit longer than expected, but I hope that through all that I was able to convince you guys why, in my personal opinion, I truly and earnestly believe that battle arenas are much more better and can honestly help you sharpen your skills much more faster than Quick Play could ever just, you know, do in general. So, I just hope in general you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel, and tell me you guys um, if you guys have any training partners that you always train with, and if you always have good time, I guess. Um, but seriously though, I really, really enjoy making these types of videos, and I hope I can make another one of these. It's really fun, I feel like I've honestly educated myself a little bit more than I have educated you guys. And, um, in all seriousness, I did so much for this, so I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys later. Take care, God bless you, and please have a wonderful rest of your night.